Yeah, so somatostatin receptor obviously doesn't impact or affect MR or CT images. Those are anatomic images, and they just show you where a tumor is, so it delineates the extent of the tumor. Um, so if you have a lesion in the liver, you can measure how big it is, uh, how many of them there are, but it doesn't tell you much about the lesion itself. Uh, so what's unusual about a neuroendocrine tumor compared to other types of tumors is they express these specific type of receptors called somatostatin receptor. Uh, and it's actually sort of central to nearly most of the therapies uh, that patients receive for neuroendocrine tumors. So for example, sandostatin or lanreotide, these are somatostatin analogs, and they function by binding to the somatostatin receptor on the cell surface and going inside the cell. So those agents, octreotide, have been around for 30, 40 years and have been used uh, for treatments of patient symptoms and also preventing progression. But then you can also take, in essence, those same drugs and label them with radioactivity. And with radioactive versions of that, you can actually image where the somatostatin receptor is in your body. And conveniently, the neuroendocrine tumors uh, overexpress this more than other tissues in your body. So in essence, what you're doing is imaging neuroendocrine tumors. So you take these small molecules, label them with radioactive agents, inject them in. They go throughout the body and they bind to the somatostatin receptor on your tumors. And then you can image where your metastatic disease is or it isn't, tells you how much disease you have. So if your SSTR2 or somatostatin receptor 2 negative, then I would just, I don't worry about the subclasses of the somatostatin receptor so much, uh, then dotate pet's not gonna be very helpful, right? Because it's gonna be generally negative. Now there are rare, uh, well-differentiated neuroendocrines that don't have any expression on somatostatin receptor pet. Uh, what I would suggest is obviously following over time with CT if you can't get an MR. So a CT with contrast works just fine. And then another thing you might want to consider every now and then is getting an FTG PET to see whether or not your disease is FTG PET out. My sarcoma. Okay, well that's an unexpected question is to say the least. Um, so sarcomas, typically I wouldn't image a sarcoma with gallium-68 PET. So somatostatin receptor PET is not specific to neuroendocrine tumors. So other types of tumors can uh, express a somatostatin receptor. So for example, breast cancer can express a somatostatin receptor. That does not in any way mean that it's a functional tumor, okay? So when you have somatostatin receptor tumor, it has nothing to do with the secretion of hormones. Like a great example of that are bronchial neuroendocrine tumors. They, only 10% of them are functional, but the majority of them have somatostatin receptor expression. Only half of pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors are functional, but the rest of them are generally somatostatin receptor positive. So expression of the receptor has nothing to do with functionality. In a sarcoma, I, I, I'm not really sure if I've ever heard of a functional sarcoma, uh, but I would not think that the uh, somatostatin receptor expression has any correlation with the functionality of a sarcoma. Okay, so when you're following a patient over time, uh, you should always be using conventional imaging. Uh, so dotatate PET should never be used on its own in the absence of having diagnostic conventional imaging. Uh, so that's the first thing. So you, you always need to be using conventional imaging. I think I, I review a number of imaging studies from certain hospitals where they only use dotatate PET, and it's very hard to tell if a patient has progressive liver disease because I don't ever have diagnostic imaging of the liver. So you, you absolutely should always be getting that. Now, there is, as was mentioned, somatostatin receptor negative disease, right? Disease that doesn't express a somatostatin receptor. Um, this is obviously more common in higher grade disease. So actually many patients, not many, is it's an uncommon type of tumor. But if you have high grade neuroendocrine tumor, we actually won't even get dotatate PET. We'll only get FTG PET in those patients uh, because dotatate PET isn't taken up in it. Uh, so there you have to use conventional imaging. Now there's then the question I think is a little more specific in particularly pancreatic and bronchial neuroendocrine tumors. Those neuroendocrine tumors can start off expressing somatostatin receptor PET and then over time will become non-expressing, somatostatin receptor negative. Um, and in that setting, usually the somatostatin receptor negative uh, disease is caught on the conventional imaging, obviously on CT or MRI, which is why you know what I think about is I follow the patients over time with conventional imaging, CT or MR, and then I use the dotatate PET to determine whether it's somatostatin receptor positive when I'm considering treating the patient with PRT. Hopefully that had some attempt at answering that question. Dave.